Uh, comic book nation season four here we go oh my god what is happening i have no <laughs> idea what's about to happen um yeah welcome back to comic book nation season four i'm your host kofi outlaw and we are all over the place it's uh, christmas eve eve everything is freezing everybody's losing power internet i could disappear at any moment that's a very real thing that we're <laughs> yeah. possibly waiting for my power's gone out once uh, they just told us there's rolling blackouts in my area. So if I disappear on you, I'm sorry, but with me to carry the show are my excellent co-hosts, Janelle Wheeler. Hi, I'm in Florida, but it's going to get cold here too. <laughs> and Matthew Aguilar. What's up? Ashby. So, so yeah, we thought we'd bring you guys one happy Christmas show, but uh, true to form, uh, like I said, we're dutching and dodging uh, the freezing cold weather, rolling blackouts, internet losses, all Sickness. the fun stuff. So all me the and the things. goon cup are just going to be here holding it down. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's, that's promised. So if you guys cool. were listening to PZ, I promised you I'd have my goon cup here. Um, you know, so here we go. I have my, uh, oh, very nice. I have my. Uh, here we go so let's get live let's do what we came here to do this show it's been a kind of hectic run into the holidays so i think we have a show here i think we <laughs> put together something so let's see what we got all right up front we were going to start with our review of glass onion the new knives out mystery uh matt and i check this out we as a christmas present janelle wheeler is saving glass onion to watch with her family <laughs> because yeah. she's not deep enough in this industry yet you're never going to be a successful person in this industry if you keep putting family <laughs> over like your own you know professional desires but it's that's neither so here nor there. it has happened so many times he's like but, uh, come to this premiere i'm like i'm supposed to go with my husband he's like nah man you gotta go watch it when it premieres <laughs> yeah but that's okay you guys are still putting love and family over this stuff and I, I appreciate that i really as do. it should yeah i know i, I was gonna say as it, as it should be there you go you, you, you're oh, doing man. fine hey uh i'm looking are we are we live on i think we don't have twitch yet are we still we're off twitch we got facebook we got look, youtube uh yeah, I'm trying to pull up twitch as well but uh i'm seeing right. facebook and youtube so if you are looking for us make sure to head over to the youtube or facebook and we can chat yeah. in there yeah, if you guys are part of the community, let anybody who's trying maybe looking around Twitch saying what's going on, let them know. We are live. It's just on YouTube and Facebook right now. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so, hey, everyone. Like I said, oh, here we are. We're on Twitch. Look at that. Yay! We're coming. Yay! Twitch, Twitch comeback. Peeps. Yeah, this show is getting held, is held together with hopes and dreams. I don't even think we have a <laughs> title on our rundown. Nope. Let me put that in now. Yeah. <laughs> So it's been hectic over here. We've been trying to get ready for the weather, deal with family, deal with travel, everything we got going on. And, you know, we still got to work. So, yeah. yay, Christmas. All right. But we got to see <laughs> Knives Out is now out on Netflix. I just spilled my goon cup. This is all going so swimmingly. <sighs> oh. So shout out to Chopper Nashville, great tiki bar that makes great cups with a lot of geek themes. And yeah, they had a goon creator. So this is where this comes from, if anybody's wondering. Let's talk Knives Out. The Knives Out mystery, the sequel to Knives Out, Ryan Johnson's back. And he has a all-star cast for a new Knives Out mystery. It was released in theaters last month. It is now streaming on Netflix as of today. And of course, a lot of what people are going to be looking for this weekend is what to watch for Christmas and for the Christmas holiday, um, movies are, you know, back in vogue. I feel like people are going to be going out to the theaters. Some people might be staying home. But there's good options on both fronts. And so let's talk about Glass Onion. Uh, we'll keep it spoiler free because, like I said, Janelle Wheeler, this is her Christmas gift to her family. She's still putting personal stuff over heartless industry stuff. And we want to encourage that somewhat. So spoiler free review from me is that Glass Onion is a lot of fun. I actually enjoyed it. Pretty, I think I enjoyed it more than the first Knives Out, even because, really? yeah, I, I liked the first Knives Out, but that was also like a kind of undercover delivery for like some social commentary and stuff like that. I had a lot of fun with Glass Onion being kind of more purely Ryan Johnson reveling in the fun of what he's doing with this series um, of Benoit Blanc and just having this cast of actors come on play these kind of really outrageous characters there's a lot of fun sequences in this and 
I think it has fun with itself with the whole mystery aspect of the film. It, it, it kind of plays with and has a lot of loose fun with that. And it doesn't take itself too seriously about, I mean, they're just funny kind of meta moments where even like the detective is like, this is so stupid, <laughs> you know, like, and it still does that, but also kind of has some nice twists, turns and surprises. So I had, I mean, it was just fun. I had a lot of fun with glass onion, the whole cast. I really liked having them all together and, they even take some like, you know, major stars and make them fit well into an ensemble. So like nobody's really like overtaking the others. Everybody kind of has a moment to shine. And it was it was kind of it was good in this series. I could see how why Netflix is investing in this and how they can make an entire kind of anthology of films about Benoit Blanc getting into these situations and being this kind of like new age Hercule Perot. And uh, Damon's asking, can you see it without the first one? Yeah, I mean, yes, you can. You just got to know that he solved a good case in the first one, and that's about all you need to know from the first one. It's an entirely new set of characters and story. So, like I said, it was just fun. Um, I'd have to go back and watch the first Knives Out again, and I will after this, but just to really see which one I like more. But the fact that I can't really distinctly tell you that, I think is a good sign, because it just means the whole series is kind of fun for me, and I like it. And I'll look forward to another one of these, and it's a good excuse for a bunch of actors to get together. And I normally don't like it when people Ocean 12s it, you know, they Ocean 12 it, and just, which is, if you don't know what that means, just a bunch of actors getting together and kind of goofing off and, you know, just self-indulgent kind of fun with each other. But this works, so yeah, I enjoyed it. Oh boy, Matt has that face like I don't know where he's gonna go. No, with this, no, but. no, no. I was curious. So is it just Ocean 12 or are you saying just like oceans? Because like I love eleven and thirteen. No, but that's a distinction. Like Oceans right. Eleven was a great story, and thirteen is like a sequel to eleven, really, but like twelve is this one where they're doing the Julia Roberts thing and like having her play herself and it's just them all getting back together with a bigger paycheck and just kind of goofing. So you're off cool in with the like having fun as an ensemble, but just not when it goes off the rails. When I it just, gets too Hollywood self indulgent and actors okay. are like, That's what I was curious you know, about. making fun of themselves, playing actors. This one had, this one was like indulgent but fun. It was indulgent yeah. in a story. It has like, you know, certain characters playing multiple characters and things like that, and that kind of stuff is fun. So yeah, okay. So that no, that I was just looking for the the distinction because uh yeah i number one i i haven't seen the first knives out in a minute so like it's kind of like you like i would actually be curious to see to go back and rewatch it and see where this stacks but like i came out of it a lot like you i don't i think i came out with right on par like i enjoyed this one as much as i did the original just from this particular spot in time just because they were just so I love Daniel Craig. This is one of my favorite. He's done some great roles and I'm not even talking about bond. I'm talking about just like some of his like more just kind of weird character actor roles. Like he's, he's great. I love this character. It's just the accent and like everything about it. it there's just such a little, the over the topness of it. I adore. So I could watch him in this character in anything. And I appreciate the like anthology format of like, yes, it is connected. It's in the same universe and everything. And it's, and those things happened in the first one, but this is largely a self-contained thing. And I just like when actors just get to like play around a bit, you know, but within, like you said, a, a controlled, like a controlled format or, you know, there's still like boundaries of the story and stuff like that. That is interesting. And this cast is just really cool. It's, it's, it's made up of just a bunch of kind of eclectic personalities and he, he's been hitting it out of the park for me uh pretty much since uh, for a while i mean I, I i don't think there's a ryan johnson project i haven't liked in quite some time so i no, just since uh, rick yeah yeah like i mean that's just everything he does it's just always just like a little it's just so unique and it's uniquely him and you know and and that goes like star wars too like everything that just comes out like his voice still comes out in it and i just really appreciate it so yeah i had fun with this and, and i feel like i'm gonna say that a lot this episode uh throughout all of our 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 topics of just like man that was just a lot of fun i i just enjoy how everything falls and i love a good mystery like i'm a sucker for that so yeah i dug it man i dug it i think this is definitely something that you should uh if you're looking for that thing to watch this is this is the one somebody all in the game one of our regular youtube commenters hey what's up all in the game asked 
any oh. comic book property you'd like to see Ryan Johnson take on. And I never in a million years thought I would say this, but here we go, Matt. Merry Christmas. I would love to see him take on something like a detective chimp in Dust Justice League Dark Characters <laughs> type of movie. I think he'd be great with that. Did you like Justice League Dark? What with Detective Chimp? Yes. <laughs> like I think I think he'd be good at that. And That's kind of amazing. making that all the right amount of funny, spooky, and kind of just irreverent, like good kind of mystery. Because Ryan Johnson has been setting kind of noir mysteries. I mean, he's done it as Brick, as a high school drama. He's done it in Looper as a time sci-fi type thing. We've done the kind of more Hercule Perot traditional stuff. And there is an element to like modern Justice League dark stuff with Detective Chimp that is kind of like film noir detective squad with a horror bend and i think he would be good at that so oh my god he would roll go. in that that is such a as such a good pick um yeah i think um i think just that because of the quirkiness that is nature to that character i think it would be such a good fit i also think in the it depending on what kind of story you're going for a question movie or series yeah. would be perfect for him you know, especially if also like you had the two questions, kind of like you talked about before in a previous episode, we were talking about questions. Yeah, like, having the two questions, a mystery interact, over, yeah, yeah, over interact like a, with each other. Oh man, yeah. that would. That I would, would love cool. to see Ryan Johnson do that in Matt Reeves' universe. I've always wondered what would happen oh, if those two like man. actually wow. met and kind of two guys that I constantly confuse in my head because of their work. Like if they actually were kind of related on something i'd be super psyched about that james gunn are you listening all right so <laughs> as for marvel i'm trying to kind of think off the top of my head like a marvel character that would like really benefit from his damon said west coast avengers and that's not a bad idea you no talk about kate bishop and all yeah, them you could because you can bring in all of those personalities to bounce off each other i think that's a i think that's a solid pick i can't think of anything else right um, now but Black somebody cat. said Black Cat, Jessica Jones. Are you Black Cat Sony would be good. Yeah. Oh man, Black Cat series with uh, highlighting kind of the thief, and especially if they dip into like when she was like a mob boss, essentially. Yeah, that's oh, what I was that's thinking. Because that's pick. that's the comic you introduced me to her, where she was like kind of like a is, warlord, <laughs> like she there was like, is, above Janelle. a team. That's, that's the one now yeah. coming through. That's All right, Black that's Cat. All right, uh, Janelle. <laughs> any questions before we get out of here? Oh gosh, uh, I'm honestly like, just with the trailer alone, I already feel like I have too much info. So no, I'm gonna leave it where it is. Like, I you just built the excitement. I'm freaking pumped. I love Knives Out. So uh, this is gonna be really exciting. And it's hard to get my dad to watch movies, so getting him to watch this is a big deal. <laughs> understand? He's a sports guy. <laughs> <laughs> that seems about Dale. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> all right, all right. So. Uh, there's no cover your eyes with your parents in moments. I can tell you that you're, you'll be fine. Oh, good. Be all, good. <laughs> yeah. all right. So that's it for night or for glass onion knives out. It's on Netflix now. Definitely. I think you should press play on that. It, it's a good, it's a good watch and, and I enjoyed it. So, all right. Let us know what you thought when you guys have seen it, hit us up at comic book nation, subscribe to our YouTube page, do all that. And uh, let us know what you guys thought. Cause we always, we like to know. Moving right along, I didn't get to fill this out. Like I said, things have been hectic, but we're going to just check in with what's going on next with the DC Studios. Did we lose Janelle for a second? Nope, I was here all along. <laughs> okay, all right. Oh, man, this is going to be a fun show. We've, oh we've already lost Janelle. We've already my lost Richard. I had, a power, I had a power outage. Like, yes, the country is trying to hold on to I will that. say like, that, like, their internet is very wonky because they were the hardest hit on the East Coast for the hurricane mm -hmm. that hit in September. So uh, I was yeah. really scared about this. <laughs> but we got it. Oh. We got this. Oh, man. So I, know, I saw some breaking news, Jim McCarty. Oh. Oh, you know, it's just community movie won't be about paintball or Dungeons and Dragons, which just means my level to see the community movie just went weep. But uh, that's neither here nor there. So let's check on what's going on in DC. Um, I was checking in. If you guys watch Phase Zero, they, they did a DC segment on Wednesday. Thank you guys for some of you for being like, that's comic book nations in the territory, but we yeah, don't why fight. Did guys. they like, do a segment? They, they just had a. <laughs> A lot think, of the phase, <laughs> to be fair, a lot of the phase zero people are big DC fans. Jenna is a or major also, DC fan. Jamie's a big I DC mean, fan. I mean, everybody thought of James Gunn with like Marvel. That's why they should stuff. come over here more often. Yeah. yeah, yeah but, so. 
guys. We don't fight. They, I, and as I said, when some of you were, I mean, some of you were stuck up on social media, but we don't fight here. And we as I said, one. it doesn't matter. Who's yeah, fighting? it doesn't matter because even if they do a segment in three days, there's going to be so much stuff that changes. No, anyway. true. Tell them they owe us yeah. a shout out. Well, they not did. even they just, no, they did. They well, shouted us out multiple times. Yeah, we, we got oh, well, very nice shout go. outs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We See, got very nice shout good. outs. It's all good. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. scratch each other's backs. Exactly. Like, this is all great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it yeah. Was, uh, so, it was, but it wasn't even James Gunn. It wasn't even also, all James Gunn. Also, there's a fair this amount time. of, uh, and if we're being real, Brandon Davis causes a, like, a fair amount of this stuff. So we got, you know, Bray BD is responsible for getting some of these quotes that start some of this stuff. So, True that. you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's on his shoulders, but uh, that's not a, but, uh, <laughs> My point was that true to form, as I said, yes, in the day since, we have plenty more to talk about at DC. So let's talk about what's going on now. Uh, James Gunn's out here just dodging and, you know, taking all shots from all sides. Um, I took another L. Somehow I took another L in DC How? before the year was out. <laughs> he takes a sip. <laughs> so when James Gunn got hired, I people were freaking out. The Snyderverse people were freaking out. And I wrote an editorial called, No, James Gunn being head of DC Studios is not the death of the Snyderverse. Oh, no. And somebody on Twitter dragged that up and was just like, oh, womp, yeah. womp. And they hit me with a womp, <laughs> womp. And I was like, oh... And I was like all defensive about it at first, but then I slept on it and I was like, nah, I just took another massive L. That's all there is to this. Like another massive L, you know, but yeah. um, yes, the Snyderverse is dead. So, you know, they did end it and, you know, everybody's gone. Henry Cavill's gone. <laughs> ben Affleck's gone. Jason Momoa is not, is going to probably switch to Lobo. Ezra Miller's hanging on until they probably get done with this Flash thing. And like Gal Gadot is now kind of like on the sidelines too. So, yeah, so the Snyderverse is gone, guys. Okay, I was wrong. Yeah, but, but Gal's not the Snyderverse. No, she. I mean, she is, but I mean, she yeah, was only say, just but, put but there. We talked by about Jack this Snyder. last time, right? Like, or like not last time, but we talked about this like forever ago of like what the definition of the Snyderverse is. So, like, I don't view like oh, Gal's Wonder Woman, even though it did come from that. Yes, absolutely, that's where it originated. But like, I don't view her portrayal as Wonder Woman as. Oh, that's gone. Because I think she's coming back for another movie. I guess. Oh, yeah. She could show up later. I mean, she's yeah. the one person I would say they would keep to to doing it. I also wrote a thing said, why does the... Now, I did write another piece this week saying <laughs> why this does need a reset. I mean, at this point, you can't keep mixing the I old... And, like, yeah, you, you can't keep mixing. We just need a reset. That's what's happening for better or worse. I'll be sad, too. But I did want to say that, you know, I think comic book movies have achieved the magic of comic books themselves. And that dead doesn't mean dead forever, right? Like, so yes, the Snyder first is dead, but James Gunn and them are, are the type and smart enough and Warner Brothers is smart enough to make money to eventually give us an event, a kingdom come, a crisis, a something mm -hmm. where we surprise see like, you know, <laughs> Snyderverse people show up and that Justice League come back or them playing the older versions of Superman and Wonder Woman in kingdom come. You know, there's all these possibilities down the line. And what I've heard from everybody around from The Rock, and we'll get to The Rock in a second, but The Rock to Cavill to Gal Gadot, is they're doing the smart thing and their statements are all like, yep, it's over. But, you know, you never know. Like, uh, I'll always love this character, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And you never know what could happen down the line. So, yeah. And they leave the window open. So It's smart. Yeah. Yeah, which is smart because, I mean, DC will need a big event. And they know that they have that whole Snyder vs. Bro kind of demographic. What I do want is people on the Snyder, because I supported release of Snyder Cut. I was heavy in supporting that. But I don't want to get to this toxic place that is getting now. Like, it's fire now? James Gunn. It's yeah, getting well, out? <laughs> I know. Everybody's saying nah, you and it. Connor and everybody is up on my butt about this. But, like, I was with I it. Mean, I was we up on fighting. your butt about it a year ago. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> I, was, I was with it when we were just trying to get Zack Snyder's Justice League release to finish that vision to do that. I was with it. And I was that with it to, to get David Ayer's, David Ayer's Suicide Squad because I love that Comic-Con trailer. It's my favorite Comic-Con trailer of all time still. Is that David A or Suicide Squad? So I still want to oh see that. Oh my gosh, yeah. But like now trying to get people fired who have barely started a job is just like, I just think like if I ever come into a job, I don't want to hear about what the last person did wrong and then be like, you are on the cross for this. I would quit the next day. I'd be like, right, I'm out of here. That's true. Like, yeah, that's absolutely. Like true. I'm not, like, that's not right. Like, come on. So I don't want to do that. Um, and I ended my piece about why it needs a reset by saying it's on James Gunn and them to wow us now. It's up to them. The ball's in their court. It's on them to wow us, but they deserve the chance to wow us first before we all 
spaz out. And they, and they have to move those pieces in place to yep. do so. And exactly. so, yeah, it's going to be mm-hmm. some ripping of, of ripping off band-aids a bit. And that's what we're seeing. And, you know, I feel like all of these, <laughs> I feel like every, every, uh, instagram or twitter post of these things starts out with so just had a meeting <laughs> with james just oh, talked to james God. and it goes and it goes <laughs> like and so and everyone uh, you know, cries yeah like, you know yeah but but i this is unfortunately with just the mess that it was it's like you have to do this like there's no easy way to do this like it's always going to be this way because just it was so chaotic there's so much happening, so much green lit, so much in development. Shelf. There's a whole movie just sitting over to the side <laughs> shelf. Like this is the level, you know what I mean? So yeah, it, you gotta you gotta be okay with some of this stuff. But yeah. Um, just, just to respond bad. to the comments, no, Batgirl's not coming back, guys. Remember, oh, that's no. a legal right. thing. Exactly. They when they when Warner Brothers Discovery signed on to put that thing away, there's strict legal things that say if they ever show any of that movie. Because they said we're never showing this; it's a tax write-off. We're never going. We made it, but we're never going to show it. We're never going to use it, and so they get money back for that. If they show one single still image, one single frame, one single clip, anything that promotes that movie's existence, then that all legally means they are on the hook for that. So they can't ever do that. Now I do. Damon Street, the Batgirl actress, yeah, yes. Leslie that, Grace, yeah. That, that's a question more than a statement. Yeah, yeah. Is Leslie it? Grace, okay. yes, they can use. Okay. Um, and Adil and Bilal have said they're still in if they want to. Okay. If James Gunn wants them, so like they can use the directors, they can use the actors, they just can't ever use. You know that. So that would be awesome. Movie. I would love to see that more yeah. than I want to see the movie. That sucks. I'm I I I would love to see the movie obviously. Um but yeah, if we can at least get her back in at some point down the road, that that would be amazing. So All right, so let's touch on the rock. Um it looks like they finally talked the rock off the edge and told him like it's okay, big guy. Like not everything wins. It's okay and the rock probably went to therapy and stuff and like got it all worked out. <laughs> Because, I mean, he was hurt, Frere. I mean, and we all know that he was hurt. Like, he had been wanting to make Black Adam for so long. He did it. He got it done through the pandemic. He put a lot of work in it. And it didn't work out. Barack is, you know, he's a proud man. He's used to winning. I don't know if he handled it the best by, you know, we've had since then all these kinds of reveals that he was dipping in and releasing press releases, arguing that Black Adam was a success. And DC and Warner Bros. are like, what the, what the F? Like, you know, and it's not going well. <laughs> But it looks like they talked it off the edge. We got one of those, I had a meeting with James. And things, and like, yeah. <laughs> it's like kids going when your parents call you into the room for, for punishment. I had a meeting with James. And so like Iraq is saying like, yeah, Black Adam's done for now. Um, he's on the sideline or the back burner. It's not, it, it, he may come back one day, but for right now, Black Adam is on the back burner. So, yeah, there's that, and looks like that's not going to be our restart. Remember, we all thought that, that like Black Adam was like the new dawn of the DC universe, and then they just like, man, DC is so great at doing these like half starts with Green Lantern and Black Adam. Henry Cavill's back. Ugh, man, poor Soups. He filmed that whole video, and for what? Henry Cavill, you know, he was here for all of a minute. Yeah, but, I did uh, like how Rock. Um put the how he put in it the way he phrased it was he's not in the first phase of the plants i did love that i like i love how he that was a look you can tell a pro wrote that like wrote that statement because yeah yeah, that's a brilliant way to because that's a brilliant way to put it because it just doesn't say like oh he's not being used well he's just not being used right now it's not being used in this first wave and i was like that's that's good props like, I don't know, like, it was props, props for that, could that happen? And, you know, to be fair, like, Black Adam, I still look at Black Adam as a success for, like, bringing this character that a lot of people, I mean, that's not a mainstream character no, at, not all. at all. So for, for that to deliver the box office it did and bring awareness and also, like, launch half the JSA and make people think, like, oh, Dr. Fate's cool. Like, that's a huge, I don't know, I think it did a lot, and I think a sequel would have done well. But I... But right now, if you're going to clean the board, like, how do you get around the fact that, like, Cavill's back and Superman in that spot and, like, it's set here and it's connected? Like, it, it, it's a mess. Like, that, that whole kind of continuity and timeline 
is a is a mess. So yeah, you can't get around not dealing with that movie and dealing yeah. with that character. But I would like to see him brought in later on, and I yeah. would love for us to actually get that Shazam. Yeah, he's gonna have to apologize to Shazam. That Shazam thing, you know, <laughs> that that matchup that like. I still don't really understand how we didn't get it in the first place, but, <laughs> but yeah, because, yeah, and that's like, the thing that like people have said, like the rock kind of, he shot himself in the foot with that. Like he was so confident that like they could just do this and it didn't need to be connected. And Shazam was some lower level. And he said all that. And so now it, it makes it harder on you in this, in this moment where people don't want to just dog pile on you about, you know, getting that your film didn't do so well. So you know, it, it, it is what it is. But uh, on a lighter note, here are some positive things from DC. We did get confirmation that Harley Quinn season four is still happening. So Harley Quinn's alive and safe and it's coming in 2023. So That's we can funny. rejoice for that. James Gunn's not crazy. Um, we also <laughs> know that the Flash trailer is going to come with the Super Bowl this year, which is a big deal. Remember the Super Bowl ad last year? Oh, boy. Here mm -hmm. we go. again. It's like that. uh, uh it's like a, what is that Grand Theft Auto San Andreas thing? Like, Dude, that's like what we again. base all of our excitement <laughs> off of. Yeah, I know. I because how could you not? It was yeah. so good. Like it was a great real I, footage. Yeah, and so many projects and wow, just I yeah. Has someone done the comparison video already? I'm sure someone has of taking that trailer and going like, nope. And then crossing out, nope, that didn't happen at 2023. Like it's like I'm sure if you go through that, there was what yeah. two things that made it? Yeah. Were there two oh things? Yeah, Black God. Adam and the Batman. Yep. Yeah. What was it? Yep. Oof. So <laughs> and it paid for that, yeah. Um <laughs> Zachary Levi says everybody can chill. Zachary Levi says he's all good. In fact, he said something like funny. I forget. Oh, he said we're Gucci. That's what he said. Uh, I love. I don't ever need. I don't need video. to ever hear Zachary Levi use hip hop slang again. But like, <laughs> he said we're Gucci. I I so liked his video, by the way. I thought it was a really smart way of addressing it because he was pretty honest. Yeah. In his like, hey, like you want to address everything, and you see stuff that's not true, or you see stuff that whatever. And I, I liked how kind of genuine it it came across. But I also liked the you know he was very frank about like, hey, if if my version of Shazam is not in the plans. I mm -hmm. just hope people liked the mark I left and we can all move on and I'll do other things. And like, he was just very, I think it was like the perfect, I don't know. I, I'll, I'll not say perfect, but I think it was about as well done as you can kind of make something like that of addressing all of these things in, in one video. And I thought, right. I, I, it, there was a lot of merit to what he said. Like, I think that's the way we kind of have to, to look at it, you know, so. Yeah, sorry, I was just looking at the finer points of his video. Yeah, I mean, Zachary Levi, good brand ambassador, that guy. Yeah, he, very he much knows so. what he's doing. So he's still, Shazam's still coming. You know, some of our favorites are still up there, right? Um, uh, there's going to be a lot that hangs on this Flash movie, though. Um, we'll see what the rest of the future looks Blue like. Beatles uh, coming! But, uh, yeah, Blue Beetle's coming. Blue That's Beetle. still a good thing. Um, James Gunn has also said we are there will still be an Elseworlds approach to this franchise. There will still be like the alternate kind of projects like Batman, Joker, things like that. They're not mm -hmm. getting rid of that. Um, but DC Comics and DC Films will be synchronized a little bit more. We have gotten that kind of also promise from Gunn as well. So, you know, here we are as our amateur DC show. We keep clicking along week to week and we'll uh, keep you guys updated. But for right now, I think it's looking like early 2023 is when we'll probably get the kind of rollout of what that slate. Yes. Oh, Damon, timely, timely question. Yes. Early 2023 is, I think, when we're kind of hearing that they're, they're going to roll out the slate and let people know what they have planned. So we'll see what that is. Um, all right. Anybody have any concluding thoughts before we go to break? I'm just torn between excitement and sadness because I have full faith, but I also like, you know, kind of got really attached to certain actors and Jared Leto's Joker's dead, baby. Jared's oh, he's so dead. dead. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay though. <laughs> <laughs> not, not that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got attached to a lot of people. Look, yeah, I agree with Janelle on that. I'm I'm conflicted. I mean, there's there's the, I'm very hopeful because we have two people in place and one in particular who has done this before mm -hmm. and has done this in a very successful way. 
and knows these characters. I know the Suicide Squad didn't like break the box office, you know, vault, but like, damn, that was a great movie. Like, I, I enjoyed the hell out yeah, of Yeah, I've rewatched it. I enjoy it. I enjoy yeah. it more and more as I rewatch it. Yeah. So I feel like, man, he can do that for some of these other teams and, and characters. You know, I'm in, but yeah, like I'm saying goodbye to like my favorite Batman. Like my favorite movie Batman is Ben Affleck. Like I love mm-hmm. his Batman. So I my favorite the Alfred. Yeah. Jeremy yeah, Irons Alfred. is my favorite Alfred. Like uh, there's certain parts to and I enjoyed, I really liked Henry Cavill's Superman. So like yeah, I, the there's some great I just never thought he got the vehicle no, to really take advantage mm-hmm. of it. And that's um, the sad thing about all like this. Jared like Leto. A, like like Jared Leto. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Yes. Fair enough. Yes. I love Jared it. Right back full that. circle. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the weird thing about this is it's always going to be this weird stutter stepping that mm-hmm. happened where like these people should have had a much bigger run but didn't. And DC keeps doing that, and that's the real tragedy of all this. Is like, yeah, and and they've all been pretty dutiful and cool about hanging out and and coming back and doing things for the fans and saying yeah. all right, all right, and yeah. just. Cavill, like this last one, I know he's like punching a wall somewhere, but you know, I'll support Warhammer just because of that. So, you know, there's neither here nor there, but uh, these times are a changing. All right, we got to take a break, but when we come back, it's time for our main event, guys. We reveal to you what our top three movie picks are for 2022. Plus, we have some big comics to talk about. If you are just watching the show in a short version, be sure to subscribe to us on your favorite pl- podcast platforms and on our YouTube page so you can always come back and check out the full version of the show later. Otherwise, we'll see you after the break for our top three movie picks of 2022. Welcome back to Comic Book Nation. If you just missed our first segment, we reviewed the new movie Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery streaming on Netflix. Plus, we talked about the latest developments over at DC Studios. Now it is time for our top movies of 2022. If you're watching, <laughs> please, in the comments, if you have the ability to comment, drop us your top three movies of 2022. We've already got a couple coming in. A couple in and i um, hey. And it's going to be interesting to see as we all reveal ours how much we sync up with you guys. So please, if you're listening and you can comment, we would love to know what your top three movies of 2022 were. So share them with us. All right, let's get it started. Uh, I think I laid out the order of this. Um, oh, did you Matt? lay me out first? Yes, Matt. Yeah, oh it's my scary God. going first, man. Yeah, I know. Well, you can drop. Feel free to, if you want to drop a quick honorable mention because I know. There was sometimes three is a hard number to get. So we should do honorable mentions at the end. Yeah, we'll do honorable mentions at the end. Fine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'll that do works. it in your commie in your right. communist so way. Let's I go. just uh, <laughs> so uh, real quick before I start this, I noticed something looking at our header image that I will probably I will talk about after I reveal my list. Oh my <laughs> god! I started laughing. Yeah. Uh, all right. So starting with my number three, uh, I have to say um, it is Day Shift. <laughs> I loved. This movie, so much. <laughs> I I just oh, came yeah. away. I, I here's forgot. the thing. Number one, number one, 2022 was full of movies that actually like hit streaming and not theater, right? So I actually had to go back and like make sure I counted everything because I there was a couple I was like, oh, I forgot that that, yeah. that like, hit throughout the year. A lot of movies have hit this year. Um, so Day Shift, though, as I mentioned before, it's just like super fun. I I the the action scenes and like the vampires were actually like creepy and 
the action was like gory and there was just so much like visceral nature to that but then like i laughed throughout the entire movie like uh, franco and fox is like chemistry and back and forth stuff the stuff where like i, I mean i'm going to get into some spoilers here it's been out long enough i feel like it's fine like when he's, when he's actually like, walking around without a head and he's like holding <laughs> his head in his hand <laughs> all that stuff was hilarious like i just I laughed throughout this Snoop Dogg, like his role is he did great ridiculous yeah. and it's so over the top and fun. I just I just loved it. So I thought this one was not one that I thought of immediately, like when I was going through movies. And then as I went back, I just like couldn't get it out of my head. So the totally day shift is number three. Forgot, I forgot that. Love this movie yes. so much. And I want a sequel. Please, Lord. Yes. I want a sequel so much. So make Agreed. this happen, Netflix. Wow. Heck yes. There we That's go. a uh, great pick. I totally forgot. Um, and I'm so glad you picked that. Okay. So I guess I'm next. Yes. Oh, are we going to, are we going to run through each? Oh, I like think, person? I think we were supposed to go. I think. So is it me? To do, yeah. Okay. So yeah. I just run through. Oh, my, okay. Gotcha. All three. Yeah, gotcha. think, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. So moving into my number two, uh, I will say it is the Batman. That's yeah. number two. Um, I it was funny because in our ranking of like the Batman movies that we did earlier in the year, this kind of, you know, was I think number four. I think I had this as my number four pick. But then like you look at the top three and they're like, you know, it's like two of the Nolan films and then the anime series movies. So like it's some elite competition in the Batman movie space. So that's even like a still a huge compliment for it to rank that high. And I actually rewatched this uh, just to like kind of refresh my memory a little bit. I was like, did I, like, am I looking at it with like rose tinted glass? I was like, no, this movie rules. This movie, <laughs> this movie's <laughs> awesome. There's so much just, I mean, I could take any of the scenes that involve Penguin just by themselves. Like there's so much fun stuff there. The like Selena Kyle is just about perfect. I mean, I'm sorry. Like there's, just no one that embodies that character like like she did in this universe in this particular world. Mm -hmm. I think it was just so well done. And Pattinson's, you know, version of this character is is feels very much set in those traditions of Batman and Bruce Wayne, and yet he brought something unique to that. And the the action and the fights, man, they're just they feel they feel like they pack weight and impact. And then the Riddler, man, you made him a creepy look. Like, is this my favorite version of Riddler? No, because I adore the kind of, you know, the green hat, like the green fedora and the kind of more, I don't know, the brighter, almost not even lighthearted. It's just like goofy. That, yeah, a little bit. There's just, you know, find it that spot between not Frank Gorshin, but, you know, somewhere in the books. Gotham City Sirens actually has my favorite riddler if you ever read that comic series that's my favorite riddler version so um but i still love this what they did with him making him a threat like all that stuff is just really well done so number two is uh the batman I, I love this and i'm excited that we're actually getting more in this universe um and then number one and i'm gonna i said i sent peter this list and i went boy if there's not a more me list i don't know what it is all right so uh speaking of the rock league of super pets was Underappreciated. <laughs> Underappreciated, my friends. This movie absolutely <laughs> rules. I have watched this movie more than any other movie this year because Ember adored it, and we watched it. I'm I watched it four times in one day. One one day. I'm not kidding. She literally wow. wanted the pets, and so we. I watched this movie all the way through, and I still laughed every single time. I enjoyed it so much. I watched it so many times over like a two month period and it never gets old, man. Kate McKinnon's like, you know, hamster like, is, is just like, there's so many moments that I just laugh out loud. Like there's just so much in this movie for adults and it is criminal that it didn't do better at the box. I was like, it, it okay, but it didn't do what it should have done. Like, Oh my God. Like everything from chip, so like he's a green lantern like chip comes like the cast of the justice league themselves and lex luther mark Marin, i thought did a great job as lex luther uh the back and forth like kevin hart's ace is just like there's just so much heart there in in his story i love this movie this movie is so and it looks gorgeous i love the animation style man 
this movie rules and it sucks that it didn't do better because I wanted more merch, honestly. Like there's like very little merch of this movie and I want to go buy it, all of it. Like it's just it's criminally, criminally underrated. Man, I, love- I feel bad that I didn't see it. I still have not seen this. League of Super Pets Baby is my number one. So yeah, and the thing I wanted to note was in our header image is like um, four movies. And I went, well, I'm glad there's one of those on my list. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get eviscerated if none of them were on my list. So, uh, so yeah, there you go. Uh, and we'll do honorable mentions at the end. So that's my list. Awesome. Dude, I'm going to go watch like several of these now. Um, okay. So my turn. All right. Right? Am I, it's my turn. Yes? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. So um, when I was picking my list, I, I was just kind of thinking like right off the bat, like what were the most memorable for me? Like what, I don't even have to look up lists. I don't have to think about it too hard. Like what am I clinging to still now? And so for that reason, number three for me is Multiverse of Madness. Uh, This, I know that I'm a little biased with the strange love and now even the Wanda love because she's in my top five faves. Um, But this just felt different for me. It just felt a little more adult and um, a little less like cheeky, obviously, than like Thor and Guardians and stuff like that. And so I, I know it's really hard to judge like huge events like this, uh, you know, against Endgame. And I know that some people don't think it lived up to that, but I truly loved this movie. And I feel like every time I watch it, I do love it more. And I feel like the special effects were beautiful. I loved the level of gore. Um, and of course there are little things that I would change, but against all of the movies I could have picked, this is honestly probably the most memorable as in like, oh my God, I remember that moment was strange. Oh my God. I can't believe they did that with Wanda. Like there's moments like that. And so I, I will always like just fan out on this type of content. And even though I've seen so many other movies, I'm not just trying to appease our comic book fam. Like this is me truly just like loving the film. So that's my number three. Love it. My number two is the Batman. So I'm with you. I'm with you, Matt. I can't believe it. I have to eat so much crow. When they first announced Pattinson as Batman. I was just not one of those people that was having it. I was a huge Twilight book fan. And then in the films, I kind of like felt let down. Like I liked like the first one, but then I guess I kind of grew up over the span of like reading the books and watching the films. Wait a minute. What? Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. This is new. This is new information. Janelle was a Twilight fan. Oh yeah. Huge. I love vampires. Where's my goon cup? Oh I boy, love it. Go. I'm a vampire. Diaries so do I, girl. But that's why I don't love Twilight. I love vampires. The originals. Oh, yeah. Boo. I mean, it's definitely a different take. Yeah. It was, it was all different. But I, like I did not like Pattinson. And I was kind of like hell bent against him in this role. And boy, oh boy, was I impressed. Like he was no longer the Harry Potter dude or the sparkly vampire. Like he was Bruce. And I love that. Um, I loved the chemistry between Batman and Catwoman. And even like Penguin was great because you just, I, I can't even see Colin in that. Like it, it just was so different. Um, it was awfully dark, but I feel like that is Batman. The more I understand the comics, the more I understand why Batman films tend to lean really dark because that is Batman. So um, I just feel like after reading the comics, this really fulfilled my like vision of Batman as I get to know the character more in, you know, written word. So that's my number two. I'm nice. very excited about it. Okay. And my number one, I feel like somebody had to have chosen this with me is everything everywhere all at once. Eee! Oh my God. Okay. So I was one of the last people to watch this. No, you're not. Uh, Cause I haven't seen it. So that's the only oh reason. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Honestly, Matt, that makes a lot of sense because I feel like if you watched it, I feel like you would have put it on your top. It just feels like you would have such a love for this. Um, it It's so hard to explain because there's so much going on, but it's like funny and violent and sci-fi and, and emotional. And it's just, it, it has everything and it is so 
well acted and thought out and it's it's honestly just like a mind blowing experience like th- i went in knowing that like all of my fellow nerd friends really liked this movie and i was like i don't get it like why do they like this so much i don't <laughs> and then i watched it and i was like oh my god like this is the multiverse not superhero comic book e like it is, but it is, it's something different, but it's this, this topic that you're familiar with if you are a comic book fan and it's like a whole different side of it. Oh, like I, it's almost like so heavy that I've only watched it twice, but it, it just is such a good film. I don't want to spoil it because if you haven't seen it yet, you got to go see it. Like you got to see this movie. It, I just think it's the greatest movie of the year and honestly, probably one of the best movies ever. <laughs> It's amazing. It's so that, my that's list. my list. That's a great, that's a great list. It is on my list for sure. Uh, I actually yeah. tried to fit in a viewing <laughs> before yeah. and I was like, I, I hear about this movie and I should. You have to yeah, pay I attention to like, you can't kind of like fold your laundry while watching it. You have to like <laughs> focus no, or you should because it's worth it. All right, Kofi. That's an ironic way to put that movie. I uh, can't fold your laundry. Um, but all right, so let's get to my picks. Um, I know some of you, I rarely bring it up on here for, uh, you know, legal reasons and all that good stuff. But uh, I also have, you know, I do, I guest on a, what, a podcast X, a podcast I do with my old Scream Rant buddies, Ben Kendrick and Rob Keys. And so you're going to, if you guys, you some of you, us. shut up. And some of you, <laughs> all of you, all of you stream here. Yeah, yeah you cheat on us. Janelle's like, after I'm done here, I'll be dipping into my other boo, my own stream. So I'll be back. On so, anyway, so I do that with them. And I know some of you are fans and you listen above. So I don't, I just want to put it out here. And there's a rare occasion that I have a differentials in my list. That's not, that's not an accident or me cheating. Um, I had two number three picks that were very close, very close. But I, I chose them differently for each of those. So don't come at me online. I, I purposely did that. For this show, my number three pick is Barbarian. Um, oh, Barbarian is a movie that I didn't see coming. I've stopped watching movie trailers a lot because I like it so much more now that I don't. But I had not heard of this film movie. I had no idea about it. We were going to talk to Justin Long at Comic-Con, and Jim Viscardi was like, go out into the dread, in like the far reaches of San Diego and go screen this movie, please. I was like, Jim, I have a lot of parties to do this night. He was like, come on, we need you to do this. I gotta, and I was like, all right. So I go out into this movie theater way out in the San Diego mall and I'm just walking to this screening event. I'm like, okay, let's just do this. I'm all bummed. I'm like all alone. And I sit down and I see this movie. And right from that moment, I knew this was going to be something special because of how much of a crowd pleaser this was for just a select group of people who just ventured out at Comic-Con to see it. And this movie has so many layers in just how it kind of peels them back and delivers some horror scares and stuff that I knew it was going to be special, but it had been so long that I, since I had seen a movie become a cult hit, and you know a movie's a cult hit when it doesn't have big advertising, it doesn't have like trailers all in your face, people aren't talk about it when it's coming, before it comes out, or even when it comes out, but you start to hear that word of mouth, right? People keep mentioning it, you hear it in conversations, you're talking to people out when you're out at bars or parties and stuff, and people are like, have you seen this movie? And that's what I started hearing. And Barbarian has really just kind of like ramped up slowly and me going out and hearing people just talk about this movie, pass it on to each other. When it hit streaming, it kind of took off and it became really successful. And it is one of, and it's not without reason. There's so many horror films that are thrown at us, but Zach Kreger and took a kind of minimal cast, minimal budget and made an entire horror movie that has a deep kind of rich mythology to it and some really gross scares and things you have not seen before in horror and moments that are just so crazy and disgusting and like horrific that you're going to stick with you forever. And just the pacing of this movie from the premise in the beginning of a woman coming to an Airbnb in a dark stormy night and finding there's a dude already in there and that whole drama to what comes in the second and third acts is crazy. Um, 
Yeah, so Barbarian. Just watching this like thing is freaking me out. <laughs> oh, dude, if you guys haven't seen it, you guys got to get up on this. It's on HBO Max now, and oh I, I highly recommend it for this weekend if you're looking for I some Christmas horror, horror counter programming. And this one does it all. Like it's the awkward, like I said, the awkward showing up with a stranger is this safe type thing, and then it gets even crazier from there. So Barbarian, I haven't seen a movie be a cult hit in a long time, so I picked that as my number three because. All of my choices had to do with something that was significant for movies and why it was significant, not just as a movie that I like, but for movies itself. And so this was the first cult hit I've seen in a long time and well-deserved. And it's hard to do stuff original in horror. It's really hard. Everybody's done it all the time, but Barbarian did it. Um, let's go to my number two. And my number two is Top Gun Maverick. Mm. Um, it came down to Avatar in this for movies that were big visual spectacles that pulled people back into the theater and, and really got people getting back to what we love about movies as a theatrical experience. But ultimately, I had to go with Top, with Top Gun Maverick because whereas Avatar was the sequel to this, you know, groundbreaking three, you know, film 13 years ago, I mean, Top Gun is a movie that has been here for what, like nearly 40 years now. Um, we've been living with Top Gun and has been this enduring classic. And the thought of making a sequel to that has been, is such a big risk, such a big, crazy risk to ever match that original movie that like you would have bet the odds against it. Then there was the pandemic, you know, even our good company, the awesome Paramount wanted to probably dump this thing on Paramount streaming to get Paramount plus up. Tom Cruise kept the faith and said, no, we're going theatrical. Like we're going to wait, we're doing this. And it paid off. And that faith was rewarded with like over a billion dollars and yeah. people being really happy at the movies again. And this is the first time in a long time I haven't seen like as much debate. And there's always debate because Twitter exists now, but like people were generally just happy with this movie. Yeah. It was a crowd pleaser. Everybody in the theater was, it, it's the first time in a long time I've seen that shared movie experience where everybody shut up and was quiet for like these thrilling parts on the edge of their seats, laughing at the laughing parts, kind of really taking it in the dramatic parts. And yeah, it was, it was just, it, they nailed it. Tom Cruise did it. And he brought back and showed us the love of movies like that in a classic way. Um, practical effects, doing the flying, you know, doing all that crazy stuff. IMAX presentation, the sound, the editing, just everything about we love about movies is is just inherent in this. And it couldn't have come at a better time when we needed it to kind of get us back into theaters and shake off the cynicism of like, yeah, it's cool to be home. I'm never going back to a movie theater and saying, oh, yeah, right. There are certain things I can only get from a movie theater. So making us have the feels all over again for Top Gun and just wowing us with a spectacle this movie was something really special yeah. all right so then what the hell did i pick as my number one with all that said well my number one movie this year is drum roll brrr. surprise me and janelle wheeler on the same page it's everything everywhere all at once is my number one movie of the year Yay! i don't even think this is really like a debate if you're anything yeah. in the geek culture space if you're yeah. any anybody who's in the geek culture space then this movie was i mean the Daniels, uh, the two Daniels who directed this, they took minimal budget. They, and they have told a story. Like I, I went in this deep on podcasts, but I'll just say it here. It's clear that like we are obsessed right now as collectively as a kind of species and storytelling species as with the idea of the multiverse, right? It's everywhere. Rick and Morty has been doing it for years, but now Marvel's doing it. DC is dipping into it. There's all these shows, even like things like the peripheral or even severance that deal with these ideas of how our lives could be different or if we could have live in a different timeline or a different series of events than this crap timeline we're all stuck in. Our brains are all looking for that escape, right? Well, this movie does that. It takes on that subject and it does it better than pretty much all of these franchises who are still trying to work out big multiverse sagas by kind of taking a massive com, uh, concept and still making it really personable and relatable to teach us that, you know, the point that as much as you may want to imagine, you, you do have to, at the end of the day, appreciate your own life, all the small things, the good, the bad, the ugly of it all, the disappointments of it all. And like, you have to appreciate all that because there's value in all that. 
And that is the stuff that holds you down no matter what the universe is. That is the stuff that kind of centers you and grounds you. Like you can be a movie star and do all that, but you're still looking for that connection, right? The connection you might think is mundane or boring in your everyday life with your spouse or partner and doing everyday stuff. And you got to kind of, you kind of got to value that. It's also, I mean, this is, I, Janelle was kind of trying to express this, but I think this is the, one of the most comic booky movies I've ever seen in my life. Like this looks like one big graphic novel come to life with yeah. alternate timelines built on junky tech, all these alternate universe. There's entire sequences in this movie where it's just two rocks hanging out, looking over like a grand <laughs> landscape, having these subtitle rock Google conversations <laughs> about philosophy and life. Right. And you're like, this sounds like a dumbest thing I could ever watch, but it works so well in this movie. There's an entire love story about people with the sausage fingers, right? Um, between two, lim two women and sausage fingers, which could be gross or just weird, but like it, 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 you like end up tearing up and getting really heartfelt about these things. And so this movie does a lot of wild out there concepts, but like I said, grounds them in a way that makes you really think about your life and appreciating it and getting away from this high fantasy of I could have lived this different life or had this better life and all of that and makes you see something. And the cast is amazing. Michelle Yeoh is a freaking worldwide treasure. And these guys finally were the guys who were like, she can do not just martial arts. She can, she can't, she's not just funny. She can't just be martial artist. She can do everything. And like, yeah, let her do everything. And Kay Hu Kwan. She shows it in one movie. Just yeah, in one, in one movie. movie. <laughs> this is like a highlight reel in one movie. And so <laughs> Kay Hu Kwan from, uh, from Indiana Jones and Goonies comes back. And this guy really does also ground this movie in a really real way, playing her husband and, and doing this. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis is amazing in this movie. Like everybody's amazing in this movie. And like I said, it's built off these central actors who go through these different phases and these different performances, but it it's amazing. Visually, there's so many creative things that happen visually, so many different concepts, so many out there things that happen. But I, I mean, for me, this was the best movie of the year. And I don't know if the Oscars and stuff are recognize it. It's nominated for six Golden Globes already, but um, it, it's, it, it, it really was the best film of the year by far for me. Um, and it wasn't even close. So, that is my number one pick. Um, we'll go back down the ladder with our honorable mentions. Um, these aren't in videos. We don't have videos for this because we just stuck them on. But uh, last night, somebody brought it up when I was doing the podcast X thing, and I had forgotten about this. But no, this was definitely my honorable mention. Everybody relax. My honorable mention is Prey. Um, Prey mm. relaunched the Predator franchise. Mm. And it was just great. Like it, it was a real spark of hope that franchises like Predator – like Alien, which is now getting a, a new movie from Fede Alvarez, who did Evil Dead and and um, uh, what, whatever that I forget. I always forget the name of that noise movie. Uh, Be quiet, don't make a sound. Whatever it's called. Oh, um, uh, oh, I know what you're talking don't about. Don't breathe. Is it? Was it? Don't breathe. Don't breathe is the one with. Um, oh my God, Stephen Lang, right? Yeah, Stephen Lang. Yeah. That's Fede Alvarez. Yeah, Don't Breathe. So he did uh, Evil Dead remake and Don't Breathe, and he's doing a new Alien movie, also for Hulu streaming, and so. Prey was just great um, from the Comanche kind of characters. It was a perfect world to reintroduce Predator. The Comanche, Native American characters and that culture was awesome to explore. And just the way the combat happens and the way that the main character finally solves this whole thing. Everything about Prey I loved. So that was a dark horse come out of nowhere kind of thing that really was a hit. And it was my honorable mention. Uh, Matt, you'd be next. What is your honorable mention? Or no, Janelle, I'm sorry. You were the middle. Yeah, Janelle. Oh. Uh, definitely Wakanda Forever, Black Panther, uh, just stunning. Um, just they set up where we can go with Black Panther, uh, even with the loss of Chadwick Boseman. And um, it you def you definitely like it pulls at your heartstrings. It progresses, you know, Black Panther as a whole. The music is just unreal. Um, and I love, I just love the women in this. I love strong women and they are having a moment and it, uh, I just think it's important that this gets the shine that it deserves because it, it's out of this world. It's amazing. And like, honestly, for me, multiverse of madness and black Panther are like literally it, it, it's so hard to even choose between the two because they're both fabulous. But for me, I'm just obsessed with Dr. Strange. It's really the only reason why I put it above <laughs> black Panther. Um, because black Panther is unbelievable. We all know this. 
<laughs> All right, Maddie, uh, what's your honorable mention? Uh, honorable mention. I'll go with uh, the bad guys. I loved that movie. I thought it was. Uh, was that I, was that this year? Yeah, that was this year. It was. It was like what? Yeah, super wow. early this year. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I really enjoyed that movie. I thought the animation was gorgeous. I thought it was. It's like Kobe said, kind of about horror, about like how it's hard to find original horror. Animation has taken off so much in in like TV and television, and it's. It's actually kind of difficult to still find new way, like new animation styles and new ways to kind of wow someone because we've seen so much different and unique stuff hit the screen. And again, like they found a way. This was I love the voice cast was so unique to this movie. Like it killed like it's a talented, really talented voice cast, but it's not necessarily like the cast that like I would string together in my head, like right off the top of my head. But it's amazing. Like they do such a good job of really you lose yourself in these characters. Like I know like super pets, like one of the things was like, Oh, like sometimes you hear the actor over the characters. And I think that goes away in time, but like there is that like, Oh, that's the rock. Like that sounds like the rock. You don't have that here. Like they really lose themselves in the characters. And it's great. So I thought that was a really underrated. It also, again, it did well at the box office, but like, underrated movie i thought it was really fun so that's i enjoyed cool. the bad guys too i've watched that a couple times this year all right mm -hmm. matt you you're still up because those are our top for oh let's do our wrap up so we can make a video so let's go back through everybody <laughs> much faster than we did tv let's go back through <laughs> what our top three are starting with you matt just when like one sentence for each so we can make a nice video out of it okay uh number three is netflix's day shift really fun super gory vampire film that i just loved uh number two is the batman uh, again thought it was it's it's one of the most iconic characters in comics and on film but they found a way to do justice and bring something new to it so love the batman and number one league of super pets uh because that film is just hilarious heartwarming everything you want in a family animated film so that's me honorable mention Yay. Honorable mention oh, honorable. would be the bad guys. Forgot about the honorable mention. Sorry, the bad guys. Uh, such a just delightful animated, like the action in that, like the chase scenes are great. Love that movie. You should definitely check it out. Janelle. Yay, for me. Okay, number three for me is Multiverse of Madness. I'm a huge Strange fan. I think they did a great job of showcasing multiverse and uh, giving Wanda her opportunity to shine. We had a lot of oh, whoa minute, uh, moments in it. And I, I, I love I love Dr. Strange. Okay. My number two is the Batman. Honestly, the more uh, familiar I get with Batman comics, the more I'm really digging darker Batman type films and uh, TV shows. So this one really spoke to me. I thought they did a great job. And Pattinson, I'm eating crow. He nailed it. And I did not think he was going to. <laughs> and my number one is everything, everywhere, all at once. This is a spectacular extravaganza of multiversal exploration. And there's so much emotion and heart I cried. I laughed. Um, I felt so attached to so many of these characters. It was incredibly acted and uh, just really, really enjoyed it. And this is not just one of my favorite from this year, but probably one of my favorite movies ever now. Uh, my honorable mention is Black Panther Wakanda Forever because they did a beautiful job paying tribute uh, to Chadwick Boseman as well as progressing the Black Panther um, future and what we're going to see coming forward or going forward with this establishment and these actors and these characters. Um, the music is gorgeous. It's visually so impressive. And uh, yeah, it's really truly kind of tied with Multiverse of Madness for me. They're both just, I love them both. <laughs> All right. And for me, my number three pick was the horror film Barbarian. It's been a long time since I've seen a horror movie really just go and you become a cult hit through just word of mouth and people reacting to it, even though it didn't have a lot of marketing and promotion or fanfare to get people into a theater to see it. And so it's really impressive to see this film that I got to see early on go on and become one of the breakout horror hits of the year. And it's one I'm going to remember for a long time. My number two pick is Top Gun Maverick. This was the movie that got people back out into theaters and really, for me, was a signal that, yes, as far as movies and in, in the entertainment industry, this was the end of the pandemic when people started going back out and seeing this movie in droves, getting back out to the theater. It made a billion dollars, and it managed to actually be a quality 
up to the measure sequel to the original Top Gun, which was something we all thought was nearly impossible. My final and number one pick was also everything, everywhere, all at once, because in this kind of time where we're exploring multiverse stories all over the place, this was a movie that reminded me why I love movies when creative people don't have the biggest budget in the world, but find actors, story, creative ways of expressing film and, and visuals to create a story that really touches us on a deep level. And this one really kind of settled all the multiverse storytelling I probably ever need with reminding me that I should love my own life in this version of this universe and the people in it and stop, get out of my head about how things could be different, which is a hard thing to achieve. So the fact that it did that was pretty amazing. And Michelle Yeoh is a treasure. And uh, Kei Hu Kwan is great to have back. And my honorable mention was Prey, a movie that rekindled the Predator franchise and showed us what is possible for some of these big franchise, you know, veteran franchise movies when they get good people to take, again, creative ideas that don't need the biggest budgets in the world, but have creativity and new context and things that make old things fun again. And Prey definitely do that, did that. And I'm hoping the Alien franchise gets that next in a couple years. And yeah, so that was a great time. All right. Those are our Comic Book Nation top three pick movies of 2022 i phrase that badly but we want to hear from you guys so be sure to hit us up on social media and let us know what your favorites from the year were as well a lot of people have a lot of great things they're dropping in the comments and uh yeah we want to hear more of them all right moving on to our final segment today matt take us through comics please all right so uh the big one we're gonna lead off with is dark crisis on infinite earth number seven uh, the big finale of this event that leads into Donna DC and and the next big year of, of stories from DC. Uh, I I really enjoyed this. This had a lot of uh, this had a, like a very high bar to hit um, because obviously and any ending to a crisis has a lot to do because they have to set so much up. Uh, and this one has like an epilogue that feels like it's got like plants of seeds for like three or four stories and then there's like another <laughs> there's another tease and then there's kind of like the future of the justice league there's a lot going on here but i thought it did it really well and also i just appreciate any time what i what i what i'm probably going to look back on that dark crisis did was put the focus back on legacy which is one of the stronger points of dc and nightwing in particular being the bridge between the kind of long-standing heroes and this new wave and and he's the one he's he's the in a, in a lot of ways kind of the superman for for a generation of heroes because they kind of look to him more than they even look to some of these longer held icons so I, I, as a nightwing fan i think i got a lot more out of this issue than someone probably who isn't necessarily a nightwing fan will but i really enjoyed where we leave things off i thought it did a good job of bringing kind of tying together the threads and then leaving a bunch open for future stories. Uh, there is an epilogue that like kind of has to do with Amanda Waller and this new, you know, group that she's got. And like some of the things they tease there, I don't know how I feel about because they're kind of things we've seen um, in just the comics universe deal with, but I am interested to see where that goes. So like there's certain parts that like, I didn't like love, but I think overall as an ending to an event, I, I thought it was really good. I actually really, really enjoyed this. But uh, what'd you guys think? I Dark Crisis hasn't been my favorite. And I've been kind of like upfront about that. I actually liked, uh, what was the other? Oh, uh, Flashpoint Beyond. I actually is mm, kind of yep. a weird story. I liked Flashpoint Beyond a little bit more. But um, I mean, I, I, I don't, the thing about it is DC keeps doing these events but I don't feel like any of them actually resolve things. It's just like they can't ever decide if they want to have a multiverse or not. And then we keep going back and forth on this point. Oh, agree. Um, yeah, and now it's just like right now we're in another like, OK, we're back to a multiverse. Anybody can tell any kind of stories. Anything can happen type deal. Yeah. Um, and, and so this was just a vehicle to get us there. And I didn't find it particularly compelling. I love Nightwing. But I, I thought this was a waste of him and Slade's story. Like I, I don't need Slade and Nightwing on a grand comic book event i love it when like slate's just murdering people and like nightwing has to stop him when like it's more of a crime story you know what i mean and he like does messed up stuff but all together you know i get why this is a good stage setter there's a lot of kind of quality things that happen to give us a another restart 
And I, and, and truth be told, I, I am always, whether it's New 52 or Rebirth or Dawn of DC or Brightest Day or whatever, like I, I do enjoy those times when DC gives us a new universe to explore for a bit. Um, and so uh, I'll be doing this, but this, I mean, this just feels like there's been so much of a rush from like, I can't even keep up with like where we went from like metal to death metal to this and where flashpoint <laughs> beyond fits in. Like I need a college course for all of this. And I'd wish I didn't because like I said, there's so many great characters that I think they're getting sucked up in this. Like Slade's now like some cosmic channel of darkness. And I was like, I don't need that. Like I love just Deathstroke. I wish that um, the Batman who laughs never became some weird cosmic entity like in all this, because he was just a great scary character to have around. So, you know, I mean, you are it, talking it about a couple of years of stories there. Yeah, I know. But I'm saying, but they all happen so rapidly that like, there's been so many universal things that like who the darkness is, what the dark universe is, what dark energy is like, where we are multiverse or not. Like it, it's all gotten very confusing, but um, it was all right. It was all right. I'll say that. <laughs> what do you think, Janelle? Yeah, I actually really enjoyed this one specifically. I think I am starting to really, really love Nightwing in general um, because of Titans. I, I have felt really, really drawn to him because of this. So uh, this was it just really easy for me to understand what was going on. I'm sure that if I had a different gauge of other books that you guys have may have read in the past, like maybe I would judge it a little harsher, but... This is one of my only like really big events in DC with all of them. So I I enjoyed it a lot because I knew these characters and I liked seeing them kind of all in one place. And uh, yeah, I, I, I Deathstroke is cool. Like I just I I knew everybody and I was like, yeah, <laughs> like it just it's just fun. Like, yeah, it's just it's just really cool to be familiar. And the more I learn and the more I you know, get my comic book knowledge up. I, I feel so much closer to these characters. And so seeing them do their thing in different environments just gets me pumped. So I, I had a blast. I would read it again. Oh, well, and it's well, funny. That actually ties into Damon who asks, uh, would you recommend us as a trade? I stopped reading after two. Um, I know we stopped covering like the event, like issue by issue. I think I, I actually think after two or it might've mm -hmm. been like three. So um, I do actually recommend this as a trade because number one, um, I don't know. Some of the tie-ins were actually quite good, uh, but I actually don't think you need them. Um, there is like one maybe you need, but like as a trade, as an overall, I actually think it will read a lot cleaner. And I think especially the the Nightwing like Slade story, I feel like benefits from having it all in one because you really like i love the things in this issue where they actually showed like had robin and slade in their old suits and like took things back to titans era and like had that one-on-one -on -one thing I, I i thought it was cool so yeah i think it, it'll benefit from a trade um next we're gonna move into something completely different <laughs> we're gonna move into mary jane and black cat uh dark web this is a dark web tie-in to that event that is going on in the marvel universe uh ben riley way to go turned everything upside down along with Madeline Pryor and Limbo is like merging with the regular world and there's all this chaos. And this tie-in was, here's the thing. I actually immediately, as soon as I saw like the title and that this existed, I was like, oh, we got to get on here because I want Janelle to read this. That was actually my like top thing uh, because Jen McKay, number one, can do no wrong. I love his work. I, I think, I don't think I've actually read a bad Jen McKay book in like two years. Uh, but number two, I just thought these two characters are so interesting just in their like how they approach things, but also with, of course, their relationship to Peter Parker and all that back and forth and all the history. I always find it fun when they end up in the same scenario. And here they're they're kind of teaming up, not as a it, it's kind of just a situational thing. And also things have changed in the core book. So like right now, no one's with Peter. Neither Felicia or Mary Jane are with Peter. And so it is actually a really interesting dynamic here of like Felicia, like kind of wanting to reignite things, but she already promised Mary Jane that she wouldn't, that are having this whole conversation. And like Felicia has this inner monologue going on the entire time. Also, Mary Jane has powers now, the jackpot stuff. So like there's just some really fun chaos here that I think the book plays with. And like the core relationship is also interesting. So I just thought this was fun. Not like I wouldn't say it's like an absolute must read, 
for like to understand dark web but i just think if you're looking for something just really fun i think this is a perfect book uh to pick up what do you guys think um i have to say real quick i thought it was a lot of fun too uh, dark web i'm still kind of weighing and whether i like dark web or not but um this book had a lot of fun things and just hearing mary jane and black hat who have been these two women who in the previous eras of storytelling have been kind of these you know, these trophies circling around Peter Parker for him to pick and choose, but kind of giving them agency in their own story. And I like the constant references to saying, like, does this, like, they don't even, like, I don't think they mention him by name, but they're like, does he? No. And they're like, no, 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 no. And they're like, keeping him out of it. And in the book, kind of by extension, keeping him out of it is is really good. It gives these ladies, I mean, it passes the Bachelor test and like gives us a chance for these two girls to talk. And I do love the interplay between them with Felicia trying to be a good person and like support Mary Jane, but wanting Peter and stuff like that. And yeah, it was interesting seeing them together. Mary Jane having powers and being able to do stuff is interesting. So I was actually surprisingly into this book. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> I love this so much. I just really want to be Black Cat, please. Uh, I can make my hair whiter. It's fine. Come on, Marvel. Hit me, call me up. I'm your girl. Uh, God, I love Black Cat so much. I'm so obsessed with her. Uh, Mary Jane's so cool in this too. I, this is just such a vibe. And the women are so beautiful. Like they're just drawn so gorgeous. And I, the playfulness, I'm so interested in the powers that, you know, MJ <laughs> yeah. never had. Like I'm just, there's so much going on that I'm all about and I am gushing over it. This is definitely my favorite this week. Um, and yes, this, this is like sexy and fun and cool and exciting and colorful and all those things that I love in comics. Yeah, no, I think that perfectly sums it up. And, uh, I just really, I just really enjoyed this and I hope, uh, for more of these kind of one-off specials or, or series with those two i would i would read that in a heartbeat uh and then last but not least this one was completely optional uh but we have an x-men annual uh it was always going to make the list really i because... didn't read that it was optional so i definitely read the oh, whole thing yes. okay so here's the thing it has firestar everyone who knows me knows i adore that character and the fact that that character is now like a part of the x-men and stuff is is gravy for me so this issue is just a one-off and completely focuses on her and her relationship to the x-men to mutant kind and all those things it's actually forgotten a lot of times that she's a mutant and it's because as they highlight in this book which i actually really love how they highlight kind of her history as she's talking to Cyclops and through these conversations or highlighting key parts of her history for people who aren't as familiar with the character or maybe only know the character through like Spider-Man and his amazing friends, right? Um, but I love that she's in the X-Men because I think they explain it really well. Like she's the bridge between people that, you know, like humankind and mutant kind because while she is a mutant, she's always actually kind of been more in the mix with the Avengers and humanity and not always been kind of with mutant kind throughout all these other things because she was doing other things and here now she's on Krakoa and now she's representing them so there's there's like resentment on Krakoa because of that some people are embracing her and like there's an amazing much she didn't even choose to be on the team right Emma Frost nominated her so there's just all this interesting conflict and they also spotlight her powers and what makes her cool I just I don't know I thought this was a great one-stop shop for if someone's not familiar with the character or why you should care I thought this was cool this is a, a pretty good primer, actually. Like, it doesn't go into super detail on a bunch of things, but I thought it did a good job and told an interesting story also about, like, Krakoa and the way their medicines are spread around and, like, the reseller market. Like, there's actually a bunch of different really compelling things in this book just to do with the X-Men. But this core thing, and her and Cyclops, Cyclops is also one of my favorite characters, so this was a duh for me. I, lo I love this, but I know I'll probably, like, I'm a little biased. So what did you guys think? I gotta go. I'm gonna get out real quick because I gotta do an article. I got family starting to run around here and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna say I loved it. Boom! Janelle. Wow. No. I mean, I didn't love it, but uh, I mean, it was good. X Men story and Firestar's kind of story touches upon a lot of things that are funny about you know people in the universe we know to be mutants, but like don't get that mutant shine and stuff like that. Yeah. 
for sure. Yeah. Okay. So I'll be quick too, because Kofi has things to do. I have to go get my eyes checked. Uh, <laughs> <I'm a doctor's laughs> <appointment. laughs> um, yeah, same. I really enjoy this. I can't believe it. I know I'm not the biggest X-Men friend, um, but this did a great job of explaining things. I didn't feel lost and I, it was good vibes. I thought it, they did a great job. Yeah, across the board. Love it. So that is, uh, oh, hey. So that's, uh, so that's comics. All right. As you see, we're coming to the end of this thing. I got to get out of here soon. So this is uh, Comic Book Nation. And uh, if you guys are just getting into us, we are here every week for you. We're the only show that does it all for geek culture. And we are on your favorite podcast platforms. We are also on YouTube. Subscribe to our Comic Book Nation YouTube page if you want to watch us. We are also streaming every week on Paramount+. Plus. So check us out there. We want to say thank you to everybody who's been tuning in this year for season four. We're going to do another show uh, next week before the end of the year. But uh, just in case you guys are busy or we don't get to say it, we want to say Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Thank you, everybody, for always tuning in and making this so much fun for us. We appreciate every single one of you, our regular fans, our semi-regular fans on the podcast, on the video. So thank you to you all. I want everybody to have happy holidays. Be safe. Enjoy. Lights, merriment, all that good stuff. Stay warm. There's rolling blackouts. I don't know where my power's yeah, going for again, power. But, uh, <laughs> pray for power and all that. And uh, have a good time. And uh, you want to say goodbye? Goodbye. All right. It's Comic Book Nation. We're out. Peace. Bye, Merry guys. Bye. Mason starting.